So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we'll cover the best low light cameras. Do know you can find timestamps and links in the description box down below, as well as the pinned comment. And also know this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. Shooting in low light is a camera's worst nightmare and the fear of even the best cameras on the market. But photography is all about capturing the nuances of light. So it makes sense that scarce light is a real challenge indeed and one of the toughest around. But how do we tackle such a problem? Well, in comes a low light camera. Low light cameras have a wide range of use cases from the night sky, star trails, concerts, street photography, and much more. And today's low light cameras boast redesigned CMOS sensors with backside illumination, better processing, and sophisticated autofocusing systems, all of which culminate into a device that's ready to tackle the perils of digital noise at even higher ISO settings unlike cameras of years prior, which would often cower in fear. So no longer are we held back by slow shutters, external triggers, and artificial lighting. No, instead capture your vision and rejoice as night photography is both dramatic and immensely rewarding. Even so, what makes a good low light camera? And what are the most important factors when considering a camera for these purposes? Sure, camera technology is improved, but not so much every camera is apt to do this job. And this is still an area of photography where you get what you pay for. Most modern cameras take great pictures during the day, but only a few ready for night's difficulty. And at night, those differences become apparent. As such, you will eventually want a specific camera for these kinds of demands. With that, we've compiled a detailed guide outlining the factors to consider in a low light oriented camera, which you can find in the link in the description box down below, as well as the pinned comment. And we'll also cover the best low light cameras on the present market. Coming at number five, Nikon's Z6 II. Nikon Z6 II is their latest mirrorless camera and a multimedia powerhouse. Released in the fall 2020, it features a 24.5 megapixel sensor and a native ISO range from ISO 100 to 51,200. It also has a 3.2 inch touchscreen and body stabilization, weather sealing, dual card slots, time lapse, multiple exposures, focus shift, microphone and headphone ports, and wireless connectivity. With the Mark II, Nikon's refined the autofocusing system. While it still uses the same 273-point phase detect system as the original model, they've refined its low-light performance, and the camera now focuses at negative 4.5 EV, half as much light as before. They've also refined the battery, which provides 32% more life than its predecessor, but crucially, this camera provides in-body stabilization, and you can capture handheld images up to one second or ISO 12800 with minor processing. Overall, the Z62 continues building upon the original model's strengths and fixes any of its initial shortcomings, and it proves they're committed to refining the Z system lineup. Coming at number four, Nikon's D780. Nikon's D780 is their most versatile DSLR to date. Released in 2020, it features a 24 megapixel sensor and a native ISO range from ISO 100 to 51,200. It also has a 3.2 inch touchscreen, weather sealing, focus stacking, multiple exposures, time lapse, dual card slots, headphone and microphone ports, and wireless connectivity. The D780 uses Nikon's 51 point AF system with 3D tracking and negative 3 EV support taken from the flagship D5, but it was the first DSLR to incorporate a 273 point hybrid phase detect AF system as well. And using live view on this camera bumps the AF support to negative 5 EV or a whopping negative 7 EV with the low light AF mode. And it's the best focusing camera outside of the D6 in this regard. Nikon's also updated the camera's shutter speeds. And in this case, it obtains a maximum shutter speed of 900 seconds, similar to the D10A. So no need for an external trigger. Plus, you can even capture 2200 plus usable images up to ISO 25600, which only require minimal processing. Overall, Nikon's D780 breaks new ground in SLR capabilities, and it's an enormous upgrade to an already proven platform, but a worthwhile upgrade indeed. Coming in at number three, Sony's A7S III. Sony's A7S III is the long-awaited overhaul to the acclaimed A7S lineup. 
Released in 2020, it features a 12.1 megapixel sensor and a native ISO range from ISO 80 to 102 400. It also has a 3 inch touchscreen, in body stabilization, dual card slots, microphone and headphone ports, and wireless connectivity. The A7S III obtained Sony's latest fast hybrid AF system from the FX9 cinema camera, plus real time tracking and support to negative 6 EV. But this camera offers 5 axis in body stabilization, which is updated to provide 5.5 stops of compensation. Even so, with its enormous ISO range, you can capture usable images up to 51,200 with minimal processing, so it's helpful but in some ways unnecessary. Yet, even with such power, it still sports the longest battery life of its peers at 600 shots per charge. Overall, Sony's A7S III is quite a niche product, sure, but if you want the best full-frame low-light camera and your budget allows it, this is it. The A7S lineup is long known for unrivaled low-light power, and this third-generation model simply continues the suit. Coming in at number 2, Nikon's D850. Nikon's D850 is their latest trailblazing high-resolution DSLR. Released in 2017, it features a 45-megapixel sensor and a native ISO range from ISO 64 to 25,600. It also has a 3.2 inch touchscreen, weather sealing, focus shift, time lapse, dual card slots, headphone or microphone ports, and wireless connectivity. With the D850, Nikon overhauled the focusing system, and this new model now obtains the same 153 point AF system from the flagship D5 with 3D tracking and negative 4 EV support. This model also boasts a 25% increase in resolution over its predecessor with class leading detail and dynamic range. Yet low light performance has also improved by nearly two stops and you can now confidently capture high resolution images at ISO 25600 with minimal processing. Plus you get the longest battery life in this segment at 1840 shots per charge, doubling its nearest rival. Overall Nikon's D850 proves DSLRs are powerful despite the trends, and it ups the standards in detail and professionalism, yet remains their best all-round camera to date. Coming at number one, Canon's 5D4. Canon's 5D Mark IV is their current flagship of the 5D series and an ultra-popular camera despite its age. Released in 2016, it features a 30.4 megapixel sensor and a native ISO range from 100 to 32,000. It also has a 3.2 inch touchscreen, dual card slots, weather sealing, microphone and headphone ports, and wireless connectivity. With the Mark IV, Canon's also overhauled the focusing system, and it now uses the same 61 point AF system from the flagship 1DX2 with their legendary dual pixel AF technology and negative 3 EV support. This new system also obtains refined cross type points with better sensitivity, coverage, and support to f8 rather than f2.8. They've also bumped the resolution up 36% or 8 megapixels from its predecessor's 22.3 megapixel sensor to capture greater detail, but even so, the sensor produces superior image quality, better dynamic range, less noise, and usable images up to ISO 25600 with minimal processing, and it also offers a built-in intervalometer to capture time lapses with ease. Overall, Canon's 5D4 stays steadfast as the top low light camera, and it's held the reins as such since its debut in 2016. It's a workhorse for professionals and easily among their best DSLRs to date. So there you have it, my friends. There's our list of the best low light cameras. For more information on this list or to read the detailed guide, look at the pinned comment in the description box down below, and I'll take you right to the full post. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. We will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography. <laughs>